Namaste. Now we come to the verse that is the heart of Vichara Sangra. In the last few verses, Ramana has been leading up to this heart verse by drawing his map of the house of the self in this video, and then by revealing Aumkar as a diagram or a representation of all the states of consciousness in this video. So because it's kind of long, I'm going to just jump in. It's mostly self-explanatory, but I'll try to explain it a little bit at the end. Devotee. What is the purport of the teaching that one should meditate through the I am he thought on the truth that one is not different from the self-luminous reality that shines like a flame? Maharshi. A. The purport of teaching that one should cultivate the idea that one is not different from the self-luminous reality is this. Scripture defines meditation in these words, in the middle of the eight-petaled heart lotus, which is of the nature of all, and which is referred to as Kailash, Vaikuntha, and Paramapada. There is the reality, which is of the size of the thumb, which is dazzling like lightning, and which shines like a flame. By meditating on it, a person gains immortality. From this we should know that by such meditation one avoids the defects of, one, the thought of difference, of the form, I am different and that is different. Two, the meditation on what is limited. Three, the idea that the real is limited. And four, that it is confined to one place. B. The purport of teaching that one should meditate with the I am he thought is this. Saha hung. So hung. Saha, the supreme self. A hung, the self that is manifest as I. The jiva, which is the Shiva Linga, resides in the heart lotus its seat situated in the body, which is the city of Brahman. The mind, which is of the nature of egoity, goes outward, identifying itself with the body, etc. Now the mind should be resolved in the heart, that is, the eye sense that is placed in the body, etc., should be got rid of. When thus one inquires, who am I? remaining undisturbed. In that state, the self-nature becomes manifest in a subtle manner as I, I. That self-nature is all and yet none, and is manifest as the supreme self everywhere without the distinction of inner and outer. That shines like a flame, as was stated above signifying the truth, I am Brahman. If, without meditating on that as being identical with oneself, one imagines it to be different, ignorance will not leave. Hence, the identity meditation is prescribed. So, let's take a look at this before we continue. What Ramana is saying is that what is called the Paramatma in the Puranas, like Mahabharata, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Purana, and many, many others, is actually the self. It is beyond the form of God. 
It is the formless, undifferentiated, unlimited Brahman. And this Brahman shining in the heart then reveals itself through the mind and senses. And this is human life. But human life comes with the price of suffering. So because of the goad of suffering, we all want to attain peace and freedom from conditional existence. Therefore, we practice meditation to attain self-realization. So Ramana is saying that the most effective, the most powerful meditation is I am He. I am that Paramatma. I am that super soul in the heart. I am Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi. Or as we went over in this series, So Hung. Or Hung Saha. Saha meaning the self. And a hung meaning I am. So I am the self. I am Brahman. When we think about it, how could we be anything else? Matter is not conscious. It's simply a machine. And though matter apparently experiences or exhibits some of the symptoms of consciousness. The consciousness itself comes from the self, and it is simply reflected in the mind and senses. The body is inert. The senses are dull, simply machines. They don't do anything in and of themselves. They only become active when the self is active and the consciousness and life energy are reflected through them. So, this is the meditation. I am he, so hung, or hung saha. I am Brahman, hung Brahmasmi. This is the classic Advaita meditation. But now he goes on and describes more in detail about how to actually do this meditation. If one meditates for a long time without disturbance on the self ceaselessly with the I am he thought, which is the technique of reflection on the self, the darkness of ignorance which is in the heart and all the impediments which are but the effects of ignorance will be removed and the plenary wisdom will be gained. Thus, realizing the reality in the heart cave, which is in the city of Brahman, that is, the body, is the same as realizing the all-perfect God. In the city with nine gates, which is the body, the wise one resides at ease. The body is the temple, the jiva is God, Shiva. If one worships him with the I am he thought, one will gain release. The body which consists of the five sheaths is the cave. The supreme that resides there is the Lord of the cave. Thus the scriptures declare. Since the self is the reality of all the gods, the meditation on the self, which is oneself, is the greatest of all meditations. All other meditations are included in this. It is for gaining this that the other meditations are prescribed. So, if this is gained, the others are not necessary. Knowing one's self is knowing God. Without knowing one's self that meditates, imagining that there is a deity which is different and meditating on it, is compared by the great ones to the act of measuring with one's foot one's own shadow, 
and to the search for a trivial conch after throwing away a priceless gem that is already in one's possession. So in other words, the position of the dualists, that I am the jiva, I am an eternal soul, and I am different from God. I am an individual, different from God. And now let me meditate on God in the heart, and by this I will attain self-realization. This is actually wrong. It will not give the desired result. The ignorance will not pass away. The self will not be realized because of the mistake of considering it a separate entity, different from one's own self. This is called Dvaitavada, and it's the lowest rung on the ladder of self-realization. The next stage is called Vishishta Dvaitavada, and this is the realm of Bhakti. When one develops love of God, unflinching, passionate, beautiful love of God, in any form, huh? one indirectly worships the self, which is reflected in these forms, just as the energy and consciousness of the self is reflected in the mind and senses of the body. In the same way, the consciousness and wisdom of the self is reflected in the various forms of Godhead known to the different religions in the world. One can worship any of them, but one should be aware that ultimately the self and God are one. Then comes the stage of Vivartavada, or meditation. And in Vivartavada, one knows the ultimate truth is non-duality and strives to realize it through this form of meditation. And when this meditation is complete, then the highest stage of Jnana Yoga or Ajatavada is attained. And this is Turiya. This is the original consciousness of the self, the non-dual, boundaryless ocean of bliss. And this is actually only the beginning of complete self-realization. But wow, what a beginning. The final state, as we discussed last time, is Turiyatita, when that realization becomes permanent unchanging, and does not come and go anymore. That is continuous samadhi. And that is the ultimate stage for which all yogis strive. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.